everyone. Thank you for your patience here. Um, thank you also for spending this uh, slightly damp evening with us. Really appreciate that. So uh, my name is Josen Diaz. I am a faculty member in the Department of Ethnic Studies, as well as the Collaborative Research Element Chair of the Humanities Center. Tonight, we have the tremendous privilege to listen and learn from Dr. Willie Rockward, who serves as a 2021-2022 NAP Chair of the Liberal Arts. The NAP Chair of Liberal Arts was established in 1995 by a generous endowment from the estate of Marion Churchill Knapp in La Jolla, California, where longtime supporters of the College of Arts and Sciences at the University of San Diego. The earnings have helped to support the expenses of distinguished scholars who are appointed by the dean from three divisional areas, that's the arts and humanities, the natural sciences, and mathematics, and social sciences. The NAP chairs contribute to the vitality and the centrality of liberal arts in the college by teaching and interacting with students, collaborating with faculty, and presenting public lectures that engage our campus community in confronting humanity's urgent challenges. This academic year, we're fortunate to welcome three NAP chairs, Marie Watt earlier this semester, Kathy Cohen next month, and Willie Rockward during these next couple of weeks. The NAP chairs are vital to the Humanity Center's aims to support collaborative research, Various collaborative research efforts housed in the Humanities Center strive to initiate, to convene, and to promote exceptional opportunities for student, faculty, community partnerships centered on the most pressing humanities issues. To this end, I also want to thank Dean Noel Norton, Humanities Center Director Brian Clack, as well as Assistant Director Lynn Duvia for their tremendous support for collaborative research and for Dr. Rockward's visit to USD. I'd now like to introduce my colleague, Dr. Ray Anderson, who has been absolutely instrumental in bringing Dr. Rockward and his critical work to campus. Dr. Anderson. Great. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, so I'd just like to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Willie Rockward. We're so grateful to have him here spending three weeks of his time with us, his very busy time. Um, so Dr. Rockward has a unique combination of leadership from academic, professional, and community experiences. Since August 2018, he served as professor and chair of the Department of Physics and Engineering Physics at Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland. And prior to his transition to Morgan State, he served seven years as the chair of the Department of Physics and Dual Degree Engineering Program, Physics and DDEP, and 20 years as the research director of the Materials and Optics Research and Engineering Laboratory at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. Among his professional leadership experiences, he is the immediate past president of both the National Society of Black Physicists and the Sigma Pi Sigma Physics Honor Society. Also, he has served over 30 years as a combination of pastor of the Divine Unity Missionary Baptist Church in East Point, Georgia, the associate minister of Antioch Baptist Church in, North, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, and the associate minister of New Shiloh Baptist Church in Baltimore, Maryland. And as an aside, he's going to be giving a Palm Sunday uh, sermon on Palm Sunday. So I'll send around information about that. Um, and as chair of physics and DDEP at Morehouse College, his vision and leadership resulted in seven consecutive years of the department being the US number one producer for underrepresented minorities with Bachelor of Science degrees in physics, according to the American Institute of Physics, in conjunction to boasting the nation's most productive dual degree engineering program. Now at Morgan State, he is refocusing the department energy and effort on the high five, recruitment, retention, research, remodel, and removal. He is a strong proponent of STEM mentorship using methodologies of faculty to student, peer-to-peer, -peer, professional shadowing, life skills coaching, and research apprenticeship. His current research interests include, include and I'm sure all of you will understand this, micro nanolithography, extreme ultraviolet interferometry, metamaterials, terahertz imaging, nanostructure characterization, and crossed phase optics. And that's what he's going to be talking about tonight. Just kidding. Um, so um, we, we, invited, uh, we invited Dr. Rockward mainly to come to visit us, to talk to us and, and teach us about mentoring um, on all levels across um, all different, you know, in, every, in different types of settings and different stages of our careers and for people with different backgrounds. Um, and he has a wealth of experience about that. So um, he's going to be talking to us today uh, about that. So welcome, Willie. All right. Uh, good evening. 
Um, I'm, 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 I'm still doing double duty. Um, while I'm here, I'm also doing double duty back in Baltimore. Uh, and those of you who know, when you go to a conference, you still do double duty, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for that wonderful introduction. I, I, I don't even know all my business, right? Yeah, but it's good, it's good to be with you today, uh, Dr. Anderson. Uh, thank you, uh, my colleague and friend, um, for the introduction. Um, what I'll do today, and, and, and I'll try to move along in, 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 in an in a, uh, you know, expedient way, and um, just to share with you. I, I don't think I'm going to be teaching you anything. Uh, I'll just be sharing with you uh, some things that I've learned over the years about mentoring uh, with underrepresented minorities, uh, both um, students, uh, postdocs, faculty, uh, near peer, senior peers. Okay, uh, just about the concept of, of mentoring. I in no way, I, and I, I repeat, in no way consider myself an expert in mentoring. Mentoring is way too vast. Fact about it, um, I'll talk to you about uh, the physics of mentoring, and I will not have any equations. I decided to remove all the equations, okay? Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll insert um, physics from the perspective of me being a physicist, and from time to time, I'll slip up and use some terminologies like, energy or force or momentum, something like that, but um, that's as far I'm going to go, okay? Um, but uh, the, the, I, I understand next week I'll be doing another talk that'll be a little bit more technical, and those who like to be there, I will be, I will share a little bit more of that with you. The physics of mentoring, the love, the labor, and the language. And I, I wanted to give you a quick overview of it on this very first slide. Um, and I got this off. It's on now. OK. <laughs> um, at a glance, we looked at mentorship, mentorship at a glance. You know, this was kind of like it's an iceberg. <laughs> it's huge, right? right? That's what it really is. Um, that's why we look at it from, from the aspect of love and labor, because it is a labor of love. Right? You, you got to love it to a certain degree. Well, you got to at least like it. Um, and, and, and so, but then you got to also know uh, the language of it. Okay, and, and if you think about an iceberg, iceberg in itself, 10% um, of an iceberg is above surface. <laughs> and the other 90% is below. That's kind of sort of what mentorship is like. You put a lot in it, and you won't see much of it, OK? You won't see much of it. But believe me, there's a lot that comes out of it, OK? Um, yeah, that's why I kind of say the mentee, <laughs> you, you don't see that much. But really, the mentor, one is underwater <laughs> and dealing with all this, OK? And we're putting all this in uh, in mentorship. And so with that in mind, I, I wanted to go, let's just go quickly over some basic models that you probably, when you think of mentorship, is probably the first thing that comes to your mind when you get engaged with, with, with anyone. Um, and it's more like a, a, a vertical, top-down kind of model, OK? Um, if we keep it up in the academic um, field, an, ac an academic discipline is either uh, right up tr uh, pyramid or upside-down pyramid. But the bottom line is it's, it's pretty much a top-down, a vertical approach, where you have an undergraduate or, you know, and they continue to move up the ladder to become a PI or professor or some of that nature. Uh, or likewise, you know, you got the PI with all the knowledge and wisdom and experience and, and it eventually trickle down to the polar undergraduate down here. Or the undergraduate, you know, begin to experience as it goes upward, which, which is pretty much what is more or less alike, okay? But the bottom line, it's a, it's a top-down approach. Usually, usually, is only in one direction. OK, where the PI is getting the information down, mentoring uh, the undergraduate. And this is more from an academic model. Fact about it, this model came into play. If we go back and do a little history, a little ancient um, look at it. This model really comes from the apprentice model, usually an apprentice. Uh, back in the day, uh, early 1800s or even before then, um, it didn't have that many layers here. It just pretty much was the master 
teacher uh, and then the pupil, the student. You know, I was sharing with a uh, with uh, Kim today up in InterVarsity. Uh, I say I remember back in when I was a little boy. Um, I'm from Louisiana, so yeah, um, I'm not even a country boy. Okay, I'm a Bayou boy. Okay, and and that's a difference. Country, you got land, right? Bayou, you got swamp. I'm I'm from there. And and it, but we used to watch this little movie. I forgot the name of it, but it was like a it was a uh, Chinese karate kind of kung fu kind of movie. And but the the master used to it was blind, and he used to call his pupil grasshopper. Do you remember that one? Kung fu, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what kind of sort of the mentoring is like. We call our undergraduate grasshopper, you know, because they, they, they're learning, they're experiencing, they, they're, they're moving up the ladder to hopefully become a, a PI or a master or things that, you know, a full-scale full professional. So, but I want to offer you today a different kind of model. Um, I don't think it's new. I just think we just don't think of it this way. We have to change our mindset. Uh, towards it. And this is more of a horizontal, a holistic type of model. Okay, and, and here, think of it this way, the traditional vertical model, if you have these four levels right here, the uh, leading up to the professor, the PI, and postdoc, and the grad student, and then of course the undergraduate, or you can also have, uh, if you want to go into the basement, you have uh, K through 12. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 but anyway, pretty much from an academic point of view, and that's not showing too good in yellow, you'd be pretty much doing a unidirectional mentoring where you're dealing with experiences, the big landscape of experiences, right? And you really just touch on the undergraduate from one perspective, one quadrant, if you look at the person from a holistic perspective, okay? We pretty much like that. And then of course, as you go upward, you have, you, your, your circle is, is increases because you get more and more experience as you go upward, but, but from a mentoring point of view, you're just pretty much mentoring along this line right here, unidirectional, one direction, okay, mentoring. Um, but if we was to take it from a, a two-way or horizontal perspective and think of it instead of going vertically upward, moving up to the next level, right, as we, all, as we always know, well, it's a common language now, but go outward. Think of it as... Um, in biblical terms, expanding your territory, like the Jabez prayer. Okay, well, well, you pretty much, if you start in the center, that would be, say, one with little to no experience, and as you get, as you grow in your areas, you go outward, you know, concentric circles, you get larger and larger, and your area is increasing, right? But, but if we think of it as in the sense of, hey, the professor is on the outer edge, because normally, or, you know, you don't have to be just a professor, it can be anyone. Now, because you made the you made the model horizontal, so therefore it touches all areas of your life. Okay, yes, it may stay over here in this area right here. We're in this area right here from an academic perspective. But if I'm mentoring someone, doesn't necessarily mean I have to remain there. I now can probably touch some of the other areas if we keep it in with this color code, where the uh, spiritual is a kind. Of, I don't know what color this is. What color is this? Kind of like purple. Yeah, see, that's the way I am. I, I only see, like, hard colors. You know, my wife called it rose or magenta or something like that. But anyway, uh, and, 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 and as you continue to move outward, but you can now start beginning interacting with each other, not only where I'm interacting, say, um, near peer, uh, undergraduate, undergraduate, in, in the academic regime, in area, and forward, but you're going back and forward because now the master teacher if you be honest with yourself, you've been in professor at uh, academia for, I say, more than ah, 10 years, safe, definitely 15, okay? You would realize, right, if, if, you were, if you were a great professor or a good professor, you would realize that being a master teacher or professor, you're always a student, right? So the teacher can always learn. I, I, I always interact with my students. I, I tell them when we come into class, first thing I tell them is I raise your hand. I say, Anyone got a PhD, raise your hand in the class. Raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Raise your hand. Uh, any master's degrees? Any bachelor's degrees? My hand's the only one up? Okay. So I want you to understand that I am the professor. I'm the one that's going to impart knowledge to you. But if you become a good student, you're going to teach me something too. And that's, what, that's when it becomes more of a 
unilateral, I mean, a bi bi-directional perspective, okay? And now, now, if you're a horrible student, you're not going to teach me much because I've had horrible students already. There's not much they can teach me, right? <laughs> but if you're a good student, I will learn something from you. And I'm looking forward to it because I am learning as a professor to expand my territory too as I help expand yours. Now, in the mentoring aspect, it becomes more, a horizontal model becomes very useful because now I can start in the academic area, but if we interact, and we, if we engage, if we, if we meet and discuss, we know as professors that, that what? That other areas of life can affect this area right here. Things can happen in your life that are non-academic that will affect your academic performance, okay? And so therefore, we begin to engage from that perspective. And here is just different ways of, of, of now having a, a, a multi-level or multi-expansion of mentorship, uh, where you're not only just doing it in the academic regime, but you may also do some cross-sectional mentoring, where you enter going across into another field, into another sub-area of a person's uh, life, and you're doing more holistic. And therefore, though you may start here, you could easily encompass all of these things, and not only from the professor to the student, but also the student to the professor. And I share with you some of the things, my experiences from this model. I, that's what I've mentored most of my students from, using this horizontal model. Okay, I use a horizontal model so that I tell them, I, I say at some point, in some point in our interactions, you will also begin to mentor me. Okay, at some point. It, 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 it may be in, acad in, the, in the academic, intellectual area, but it may be in another area of life that I need you to guide me on. Okay, and that's the beauty of mentorship, that's why I go into what I call the mentorship model called We Care. I define mentorship essentially it's going to ball down, ball down the nitty gritty will be caring for one another. In particular, uh, the mentor caring for the mentee. And then over time, over interactions, over experiences, guess what's going to happen? It's going to become bi-directional. It'll sort of in one direction, but eventually it becomes bi-directional. And, I, oh, I'm missing, Ooh, okay, something's happening here. Wow, okay, this was, what happened? Oh man, I didn't know I had this in there. Okay, good. Um, okay, so when we think about care, I, I call it a care model, we care model, a we care uh, approach, right? Um, and when I say we care, it really boils down to, to love, okay? That's why I get the, when I say the physics of mentorship is dealing with love, labor, and language. And, and, and so the love aspect of it is really the we care approach. And the care, care is, is the acronym that, that helps us to understand what the labor and love language that goes on into the mentor and mentee relationship. Okay, uh, it's, it's sim simple equation, right? Y'all got that? <laughs> now, if I put x equal or y equals x plus z, then you then you lost, right? Right? It's algebra. It's math. That's all it is. Instead of using one letter, I use about five of them. Right? That's all it is. So, um, using a language where we actually we care. And I, and I don't say you, I try to say we. We is inclusive. You know, you know, one thing I share with couples in, in, in the ministry aspect of things, preparing them for marriage, you know, things of that nature, I say when you say I do, it means that you turn this, well, before it's an M, right? An M is an upside down W. After you say I do, you turn the, the M upside down and it becomes we now. It's no longer me, it's we. And so it's inclusive. Yes, mentoring, mentoring, mentoring may start off as a me, right? It starts off M-E. It starts off with M-E. But as you grow in your mentorship, as you grow in your relationship, as you grow in your interactions, then you begin to start seeing some things that are a little bit different. 
and they go into the labor and language of, mentor, of mentorship. Um, and, and this usually, mostly you would assume initially this applied to the mentor, but really it also applies to the mentee, okay? For the labor portion of it, the mentor is, going, is a change agent. That's, that's what we really are. We're here to help the mentee change and grow, right? We don't like to use the word change too much because change means, usually means you, you know, you're going to uncharted territory, you don't know what's going on. But, but, but from a mentor point of view, a mentor have already been there, have already journeyed through that, that pathway somewhat, but now they're gonna help you journey through it as a mentee. Change, you're a change agent, but then also the change agent that you become a champion, okay, a champion. And I'll give you some examples from my, my personal life as I walk through it. Then likewise, um, the A stands for action, because in labor, you always doing it. To labor means to work hard, right? To labor. To, to, some say uh, uh, labor really is hard work, and really is towards exhaustion. You work towards exhaustion, not just doing this regular old nine to five. You go be up and beyond in, in mentorship. And then, of course, the proper attitude. You, I don't know if you all heard this expression. I'm quite sure you have. Your attitude determines your... <laughs> I know you all heard that expression before. Your attitude determines your... <laughs> Boom. Your altitude. I know you know. You just were like making you look silly up here, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Your yeah, attitude determines your altitude. If you think positive, most likely you can get a positive output. If you think if you think negative on something, I'm always thinking down and pessimistic, and that's what's going to happen, right? You know, you know, um, you always look for something positive in everything. Even if you make an F on the exam, look for something positive. In it. At least it wasn't a zero, right? <laughs> And hopefully it wasn't the final. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Okay. And and the R. I'm not gonna go through this because most. Can you see this one now? It's real low, but the R stands for relationship plus respect. You're developing. You're cultivating a relationship with one another. You're right. And the relationship is two-dimensional. It's, it's, it's bi-directional. It's not a single way. You create a relationship. You become engaged with one another, which leads down to the last one, E, energy plus engagement. That's what you really, I mean, you're going to expend energy in this. It's not going to be something simple. Uh, why does that keep cutting off? It doesn't like me? OK, so what I'm going to do quickly, um, using, using this model, using this approach, I'm going to give you some examples from my personal experiences. Um, uh, when I think about the mentorship of uh, my, my experiences, okay, uh, I kind of label it from the seven P's, okay? I, I was, I'll go over this seven P's as a parent, a, pro, uh, a professor, a physicist, principal investigator, meaning more in research, and then likewise as a president of organizations, a player, a player, meaning football. Okay, uh, <laughs> and of course, a preacher and also pastor, I served in that capacity. Okay, this is, as, as a parent, I am this year celebrating 30 years of marriage with my lovely wife. Yeah, 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 thank you, thank you. You should be giving her a hand. I'm the one who was a fool, right? No. Um, uh, and this is a very old picture. Uh, we have seven children, seven children. This is... Um, I, I, for the, for, there are, the, the, that you give ref, give you a more of a reference, one, I have hair on my head. <laughs> uh, um, and my wife, she's also a math, math professor at Morgan. Uh, this is our youngest one, Faith. She's, she will be 25 this year, um, on Christmas Day. So that tells you about how old this picture is. And, and, and they, they asked me, you know, as young adults now, they asked me, Dad, will you please, you know, you know uh, uh, will you, you know, be aware of our uh, adult identities now? 
and, 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 and minimize your pictures. I said, okay, all right. And don't show any of our baby pictures. I said, okay, all right. Um, but nevertheless, as a parent, that that's one of your phases of uh, beginning into the mentorship role. And getting into that mentorship role doesn't, you don't necessarily have to be a parent. All right? You don't have to necessarily be a biological parent unto, unto, unto uh, to younger people, to youth, right? Many of us in academia, we know we meet students who we just take to, right? And if you were honest with yourself, when you went through your, your stage, of, of school, there was always someone in your arena that took to you in, in some way. Maybe it wasn't as many, but it may have been someone. And so that begins a phase of that. Then I go into my mentorship, my experience when I was, as a football player, I was going into physics. I went, I did not, I did not become a physicist because I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to be a professional football player. And I, I had the speed, I had the talent, I had the talent, but you see this one right here. I was scared of that guy right there. That's why I was out running him. Um, <laughs> no, but anyway, um, and, but through football, it taught me a lot. The coaches, okay, taught, you, your experiences, believe me, you pull off and draw off your experiences. Mine's with football. Yours could be some other uh, corporate event, or it could be the athletic event, or it could be that you were involved in some other things in high school. But from that, you're pulling, you're really gaining a better understanding of mentoring and mentorship. And here, this is when I was playing football, um, and, and then I went on as a president. In my undergraduate years, I was a president of the student government in my senior year, um, and then, of course, um, president now in my professional um, uh, arena in, in both major organizations, uh, National Society of Black Physicists, and also the National uh, Sigma Pi Sigma Physics Honor Society is the national. Uh, it is celebrating its 100th year this year. Um, and like I was telling you, these two guys right here, uh, Dr. Thomas Odom, he was a chair of the physics department when I was a freshman and so forth at Grambling State, and then likewise Dr. Uh, Jethro Terrell uh, were my two champions, okay, that, that really made me change, um, you know, taught me about time management, put me on a schedule, you know, Help me to see and utilizing all my talents, okay? Because you realize that, okay, your talents complement you. And not just to only focus all my energy on physics. Yes, you're going to be good in physics. You, you're kind of talented in that area. But also, there's other areas you're talented in which will help you in your physics, okay? And so these two um, became, became the father figures to me that I didn't have. My, my mom and dad divorced when I was four. Um, and I'm number six of eight kids, um, but there were mentors who were always in my life, okay? And these two, uh, on a sad note, Dr. Terrell just passed away this past weekend, and um, so I was reaching out to his, his daughters, who are twins, <laughs> and, and um, he, he, he made a major impact on my life, even though, especially after I gave up football from, from, um, from, from the... Um, uh, learning uh, firsthand about momentum, or collisions, that is. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't win. <laughs> but, oh, man, that was funny. Now, it was painful then, but it was funny. It's funny now. And now as a physicist, um, BS at Grambling, and again, I told you about my champions. They were there who coached me through, who challenged me, who made me change. And then I even had champions all along the way in my stage. Uh, masters who work on my masters in SUNY Albany. Uh, um, you know, some were in physics, some were not. Dr. Nix, she was in she was a social scientist. Um, but she recruited me from Grambling and, and things of that and Dr. Kimball in physics, uh, uh, Dr. Carolyn McDon McDonald, you know, your champions do not have to look like you. They do not have to be of the same racial background as you. They, they don't have to be, they can come from any and all places. Okay, when you, when you look at, when you're ready for mentorship or you, you open to mentorship, right, you, 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 the key factor is that we care. Care has no face or gender or race upon it, okay? Um, and then of course, when I went in, in, um, in, in the PhD program, 
I kind of left Albany, New York. It was too cold for me. Okay, I just got to be honest with you. I'm from Louisiana, and uh, where the winter, the winter is like the winter, the lowest in winter. We're freezing when it hits about 55 degrees, right? Um, um, and go up there in Albany, New York, when they got happy during during May when it got 40 degrees. Oh, it came out of the shorts. I said, oh, I gotta go. But no. Um, <laughs> but I had but I had a great time, had a lot of people who showed great support and mentored me in every area along the way. Um, and then of course went to Atlanta, Georgia, um, and Georgia Tech. And some mentors are not necessarily some mentor are, are, are one situational mentors, um, and some are with you for the, your lifetime. Okay, one of my mentors at Georgia Tech, Dr. Um, um, Raymond Flannery, English fellow. We, or uh, Dr. Valk, this one, uh, he was the chair at the time. He, he actually recruited five of us, five under, underrepresented minorities at one time to come in uh, and in the PhD program at Georgia Tech the same exact semester, same exact year. I was one of those five. But Dr. Flannery, <laughs> We just, we studied together, we worked together, me and those five. Um, we had a study area called, we called the black hole in two, in two ways. One, right? one because we were black, but also it was a little hole in the wall, you know, but you had a little physics connotation, the black hole, right? Yeah, black hole, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Blend it on in, right? Uh, <laughs> but, but Dr. Flannery, classical mechanics, any, if any of you are football, um, college football uh, fanatics and you keep up with, the championship in the fall of 1990, when I, when I first arrived at Georgia Tech, the fall of 1990 and the fall of 1991, Georgia Tech went undefeated and won the championship. We had a 8.30 class, classical mechanics, with Dr. Flannery that had a, about 40 of us in there. Every, and we met on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays for about an hour and a half. Every single Friday, he would give us a problem set that was due on Monday. And he would say, I hope you enjoy the football game. <laughs> all right. We thought he was mean. Okay, but first of all, me and my uh, the other colleagues in the black hole, we say, oh man, he gotta be a racist. He gotta be, he gotta be a racist, you know, he gotta be a racist. And we start realizing, looking around like, Man, he mean everybody, you know? I was like, no, nah, he just a mean, he just don't like graduate students, right? So, and to find out he was my champion, my one situational champion, when I didn't pass my qualifiers um, the first time. At Georgia Tech, you had five areas that you had to pass qualifiers in physics, and you had to pass, you know, at least a 60% or higher in all undergraduate physics. All you went into that for three days, you qualified, took a qualifier for three days, you went in there with a, with a, um, with a pen, and, uh, maybe a very, very basic calculator. I mean, like plus minus subtraction, one that you really probably would need. And a soft lunch, okay? You know what a soft lunch is? One that makes no noise. So you can't handle potato chips, no, no, no. soft, okay? <laughs> and and, 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 and I, I, I passed four of the five, I didn't pass one. Electricity, magnetism, I went brain dead on. You know, just sometimes you study, and you know you studied it, right? And then you get to the test and you're like, ah, you know, and that's what happened to me. And, and so I didn't pass it that first time. And so, and Georgia Tech had a policy that, hey, you, you, you pass the other four, you can do it again. So you take all five of them again, right? And so I had to, you got six months to do it. And the day when I got my news that I didn't pass it the first time, I was, you know, down, I was walking in the hall, I just got the letter and all that stuff, passing by Dr. Flannery. He said my name. He said, Rockford. And I looked up, I said, this guy know my name. Is he, and he's speaking to me. Yeah, yeah. Rockford, you didn't do good. I know you could pass. I saw it in you in my class. You got it in you, what it takes. So I want you to go ahead and study, knuckle down, pass it next time. That's all he said to me. Pretty much probably the whole time he was there. But just hearing that bit of encouragement from him gave me internal motivation, helped me to get my internal bearings and confidence, and went on and passed qualifiers and had no problems with 
and I end up doing my doc my dissertation in electricity and magnetism. <laughs> yeah, and that's what normally happens. Okay, so um, and then as a professor, I'm gonna go through this quickly. Uh, they already say that about what I'm doing as a, you know, and, and now as a preacher. I know that's, that looks funny, but I used to do street corner preaching in Atlanta, uh, in in the area they call the Bluff, the Bluff, one of the worst areas in Atlanta. Uh, not, uh, it's gotten better now, but it, it used to, we used to do this as Easter uh, preaching and things like that, but in other ways too. So, from from all of my experiences, I share with you how I land to this what I call the We Care approach, um, and I put it up in in both at Morehouse and also at, um, at Morgan. And for the brev brevity of time, or sake of time, I'm just gonna give it all to you in one. Now, care, for in this case, oh, wait, that's too fast. In this case, I pretty much, <clears throat> it's in an academic regime where I'm showing our students we're dealing with their curriculum. Curriculum, advisement, and when we say advisement, not just, not just academic advisement, but life skills, pipeline guidance, career guidance, okay, career mentoring. Uh, help them to see what 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 you can do. The, not just taking courses, but the skill sets you're learning. Okay, and then we talk more about the the uh, the top three: uh, recruitment, research, and retention. And then, of course, what some of those activities. And as you can see, there's a lot of things that's going on in the care model. As I as a care approach, I spoke in earlier as it relates to mentoring only. You put in a lot of energy, a lot of energy. And it seems like not a lot is not coming out, but you'd be surprised. And then, of course, extras. You had other things we took on graduate school tours, speakers, and things of that nature, too, um, which <clears throat> opened up the door for me to get to this personal care model or mentoring. I call it mentoring with a smile. And then I end up using uh, in my research laboratory where I pretty much use, I call it SMILE as an acronym for scholarly mentoring in lecture or slash laboratory experiences, okay? In, it, in other words, I would take students who were not doing very well in, in their lecture, but had an interest or thought they have an interest or was willing to work in my research lab, okay? And I didn't, I didn't have any, cut any slack on them, but I also knew some other things about them. I found out some other things about them. Many of them was working little part-time jobs at other places and stuff like that, which means that they're working off campus. That means they're spending a lot of time off campus and knowing that those jobs are not necessarily directly related to their academic major. So therefore it's taken away from their energy to put into their academics. So I say, okay, you work in my research lab. I need you, you know, you know, because at Morehouse I only had undergraduates. There were no graduate programs at Morehouse. And I had all males, okay? Morehouse is all male. But right next door to it, Literally next door was an all-female college called Spelman. But I also had to learn, see, see, mentoring. I had to learn, not just from an academic point of view, I had to also learn the dynamics of, of <laughs> the ratio of male to female in my research lab, okay? And people say, well, that's not being inclusive. I say, no, I could not make it 50%. If I had 50-50 split in my research lab, I, I would get nothing done because they were socialized too much. <laughs> But I realized if I kept it at about uh, 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 60, two-thirds, one-third split, perfect. It was perfect for my research lab. And, and I mean, we got, we got a lot of things done, okay? And so, well, but it's simple was that I would work with them much in their freshman year, okay? The blue, the blue um, is more about mentoring and coaching, interacting with them, you know, spending more time with them. And then as they go, that, that, as they grow in their, their advanced years, the blue one will go down. Notice it go down and down and down. I always had a little something, but in their junior, senior year, I didn't have to spend much, much energy with them because now the lecture laboratory, they were taking off. They really were taking off in their own. They were becoming more independent, uh, more self-sufficient. And even in these latter years, they became more like peer mentors to the younger ones, okay? And so I was able to then get them to essentially transition from being, being heavily mentored uh, through, through, uh, directly with me on through where they became, become mentor, peer mentors, uh, or near peer mentors, those things of that nature. Um, 
Okay. Um, and so I kind of sum this up in these three ways right here. These three areas I kind of sum up when I was teaching always, when I'm mentoring my students, I'm always teaching them about mentoring with a smile, but I pretty much get them to see three things, their net worth, their network, and then of course their net weaving. Net worth is what you know. You got to know something. <laughs> There's some things you just got to know. You got to know the basics. You got to know the fundamentals of that nature. You got you know, you to have a good work ethic, right? And your research skill sets. And then you start learning more about your career aspiration. But there are some things you just ought to know, okay? Personal, your personal knowledge. And then your network is that who you know. So as you learn in these things, I'm, as a mentor, open up opportunities for them to be able to get these research experience the group interactions uh, dynamics, uh, which both on campus and when they have these research experiences off campus, okay? And then, of course, encouraging them to be involved in organizations, okay? Organizations that help develop their interpersonal skills and being able to work with, with others who are not necessarily physics majors or, or engineering majors or, uh, you know, science majors. You know, you've got to learn to work with everyone because when there's real-world problems, guess what happens? You need everybody you know, you know, to chip in uh, in their different respective areas. And then, of course, not only what you know and who you know, but then who knows you, okay? Because in your interactions, in your, in your um, uh, group dynamics, in your, your research experiences, that would open up ways for them to present at conferences so they get to know more, more people and more people get to know them. And which I told them, I said, in many cases, you will get a call or a letter or uh, someone who, who don't know you directly, you know, uh, maybe about two, two or three um, sigmas removed, okay? And, and that, but that is a way of opening up your, and some of my results now over, over a 20 year period, I was able to land students um, both at Morehouse and now also at Morgan and almost all of the U.S. states uh, and, and no one in Alaska, uh, and I, I think I just recently had someone in Hawaii, um, and some of the territories, um, and, 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 I, and it's still growing. They're going both not only to REUs, but also graduate schools, and uh, many, many, um, many of my students went on to get their do, uh, advanced degrees, most, not, most got their PhDs um, and in, the, in the STEM, and, and also in non-STEM, okay? Um, Never, never forget one of my students, um, Valley Victoria, 2014, 2014 at Morehouse College, uh, double major in physics and Spanish, named Evan Turnage. Evan Turnage, you're welcome to look him up. Guy from, from Jackson, Mississippi, major in physics 4.0. The boy was brilliant, right? Had a full ride to go to uh, Harvard and get his um, PhD on one of the Nobel laureates. Guess what he wanted to do? He wanted to be a politician. <laughs> now, if I were to stay with the mindset of my, uh, what I came up under, you know, they would say, oh, it's a waste of your energy and physics to go and be a politician, right? Now we realize you may want some more physicists, engineers, or sci uh, you know, scientists to be in you know, as, as our, you know, politicians to make real, you know, make real decisions, right, based upon scientific knowledge, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and he's doing it now. He's doing it now. So, but, but that means I had, I had to change. As I was mentoring him, I was learning more about him, and he was learning, as I was, uh, he was learning more about me. And the fact about it, another key example, uh, my students began to mentor me and helping me raise my children. Okay, and I, and I use that example because many, I have four boys, my wife and I, we have four boys and three girls. Our two older sons are adopted, okay? So we have a blended family. And, and so I'm about 20 to 20, 25 years removed from the kids. So I'm a generation and a half removed from them. What I used to apply in my day that, that didn't apply to them, okay? Or it modified, it has changed. We used to say a certain thing. We used to say, oh, uh, like when you were cool in the 80s, we'd say, you know, we'd like to say, what's up? You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you're cool, right? 
But they didn't use that anymore. They're like, Dad, you old. I'm like, what do you mean I'm old? You know, that, you know, that cool. cool means cool, right? Now, nah, you know, and if, you, and if a young lady had, was very shapely and all that, they say, oh, we used to say, you're fine, right? Or you're a if you're, brick house, right? Remember that? Brick house. Remember that song? Right, 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 right. They're like, Dad, you're embarrassing me. I said, what? Okay. They don't use that. They didn't use that anymore. So my students, when I would mentor them in the research lab, I would, you know, come in there sometimes, hey, man, y'all need some help. They said, what, 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 doc, what you want, Dr. Rock? That, that, was, that was the nickname. They called me Dr. Rock. I said, man, how do I connect with my boys, you know, my sons, you know, and my daughters? I said, what, what you saying, Dr. Rock? I said, well, I was like, man, I try to tell them, you know, I'm trying to get to know their language and stuff like that and things of that nature. And they were like, well, no, nah, you can't be saying that, Doc. This is what that means now. I said, huh? Yeah. Said, when you say you're cool, that don't mean cool. You got to say, you know, you fat. I say, fat? Not F A T, P H A T. I say, huh? I said, man, y'all, y'all crazy. No, no, no. But what we were doing, they were allowing me to go into their social arena, right? They were teaching me. They were bringing me into the social arena so I could understand their language, as they helped me to understand where I'm at in my language. So, you see, so they began to start mentoring me, and help me. And to this day. I call them my academic sons and daughters, and, and really many of them are, are really like my sons and daughters. Okay, we stay in touch with each other. Um, those who went on, they um, a few, <laughs> believe it or not, I have to marry one of them, a couple. Uh, one of my physics majors, he's now in his, working on his PhD at Rice University um, from Morgan. He, him and his fiance. So I'll be marrying them in October, performing their ceremony in October. So. You know, I, I consider it as a, a double honor, you know, and, um, and things like that. So, and another thing in this, you want to make sure you expand their experiences, international experiences, especially now that our students are, are just not competing, you know, nationally, you're competing globally. And there's some things we have to continue to remember. Uh, and this is exam. This young man right here, Kofi, Kofi, Kofi Christie, he's one of my students. He came to Morehouse and finished in like three and a half years, okay? He could have finished in three and a half years, but I, I, it kind of slowed him up a little bit. Um, and uh, in three years, but maybe he slowed up to about, to about four. Um, he now he finished his doctorate and his PhD at, at Vanderbilt, and he's now being recruited by several um, schools. Um, One of, the, one of them is in San Francisco. I think it's either Ber Berkeley or Stanford, one of the two. Um, and, and LSU and Carnegie Mellon and all that. So he just told me, I begin to see someone, remember I told you you put a lot of energy in the end and you don't know when you're going to, you know, see, I'm beginning to see a lot of the fruits of my labor um, now and talk about it. So I want to try to wrap this up by giving you a few um, Opportunities for change and coalition. And these are some things that some of them are in the physics area, but it can apply to other non-STEM uh, and non-science uh, areas too. About you know, change, opportunities to change, and thinking more or less from a, 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 co a coalition point of view, and likewise a collaborative point of view. We have to become more interdisciplinary. We can no longer just stay in our silos and our disciplines, mainly because if we're going to solve some of the nation's problems or some of the world's problems, okay, we have to begin to start thinking differently, okay? We cannot think in our own silos. So these are some, some, some things we can apply. I'll give you a copy of my slides. Um, so for the brief sake of time, I'll, I'll kind of move forward. So I think of it in the simplest form. It's a labor of love, and these are the four main areas I've always related to when in mentorship. Perseverance. Prayer, many times, many of my students didn't come completely prepared at mathematically or even socially, okay? Some of them were still, as I would say, in the streets, okay? You know, still doing some things they should not have been doing. Selling weed, you know, that's not what you say nowadays, right? That's, see, I'm outdated already, right? Uh, but and, uh, going to jail, right? And uh, I mean, one of my, one of my, 
I mean, he's my son now. He, um, Joshua Burrow, that God Almighty, that guy, man, he'd tell you, um, he, he went through some things. But he just, he just, he's now a postdoc at Brown University in one of the top engineering labs. You just don't know, right? You cannot take a student from what you see and, and then make a final judgment. Like they used to say, you cannot judge the book by its cover. You've got to stay with the student all the way. And so, and that's why I, I put in a lot of perseverance with that little fella. And uh, to this day, and of course, you eventually lead down to partnerships. And then likewise, this is my last slide, and I wanted to share this with you. Um, my deceased father gave me this that really stuck to me. Um, and mind you, um, in mentoring, you have to be willing to share about you. Students, especially we as faculty and professors, um, some of our students see us as, as gods, as if you know, we're so you know, demigods, not the god, but demigod. Um, you know, because they, they, they hold us to such a high esteem. But it's good for them to know where you've come from, you know, your journey. Because too many times they focus only on your, your end point or your immediate point, your present point. And so um, I tell people all the time, you know, some, a lot of young men always say, well, my dad wasn't around. I say, well, my dad wasn't around neither. Him and my mom divorced when I was four, and I was six of eight kids. And mom had to raise all eight of us, okay? And she, she, she dropped out of high school in 10th grade, right? So she had, had to do a lot. So you're not the only one going through these things. These things help you. They're building something in you. They're building character. They're building resi resilience. They're building something in you. And likewise, as a mentor, it builds something in me, too, to help me to learn more about them from a compassionate point of view. And so, and this is, what, this is my last statement. And, and my dad told me um, in his latter years, I, had, I was one of the ones, you know, helped taking care of him and my younger sister. Um, and my younger sister, yeah, we, he told me, he said, blood, see, water runs, blood drips, but love sticks. That's why I said, the physics of mentoring is really about love, labor, and learning the language. Love going to be there when it's all said and done. It doesn't matter if you, if you relate it. Blood drips mean like you're, you can. You're related by blood, OK? Water runs mean you, you know, someone who really don't care about you. You know, water just flows, keep on moving. But love going to be there with you. And that's what mentoring is really all about. Being there, showing that you care. You, I care about you. I care about your well-being. I care about you going to the next level. I care about you being the best that you can be. And in academia, that's what we really get paid for. We get paid for caring. Because we, we know you can't pay, pay us enough, right? Yeah. Why? Because we, we invest so much in you. Because we want to see Think we want to see our student go places because you know where our reward comes from? Our reward comes from when our student is CEO and moving up in different areas in the industry or coming up with different new um, solutions and patents and all the, or just being a good person, right? You say, oh yeah, I remember you was a little knucklehead. You was a freshman, right? That helps us in our, in our fight, in our continue to, to, um, to, to part knowledge to the next generation. So that is it on my screen. And so I'd like to pause at this moment for any questions, if there be any. Thank you very much. Right now, I'm a white guy with gray hair who knows a lot about these things. So 
what is, I mean, I think I have some ideas, but what's your advice to sort of break down the barriers for someone who looks at me at my endpoint? I have to share my story to say where I'm from so they can actually realize that I have more connection to them than they might. Then, 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 not, then, then, then it's perceived. Either from a racial perspective. Right, or right, or right, 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 right. Um, I'm thinking. <laughs> That's a great question. The reason why, because I, when I talk about my own experiences, a lot of white guys help me. In fact, I got into physics because my high school teacher, uh, Mr. Mr. Johnson, I'll never forget him. All right, he he was t you know I was the only black guy in the room. Right, right, and I I had to take physics, not that I wanted to, but because um, my mom told me that you know. You're going to take physics, right? Because uh, she knew that I was gifted in science and math. And so she made sure I stayed advanced. Otherwise, I didn't play football. You know, and I was scared of my mama. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, I was, you know, yeah, I had the fear of God. And you know, that woman, no, she didn't play. All right. Um, and, and so, but a great way to try to connect with them is to observe. Use the scientific method. Observe. See where, see where they, you know, if you notice that they're in your class, that's one. Um, uh, see, trying to throw out things that, sh that would, you know, you, you're kind of fishing at first because you want to find out what, what is their interests, right, what their interests are, and then meet them at their interests and see if your interests connect with them and then begin to start developing from there. Okay, th th that's, that's, that's one way. Another way, um, and I found out, um, especially when, when you're trying to connect, when I say a non-racial connection is trying to be made, is um, pose it to the, to, the, to, the, to the class at large. Sometimes, um, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, um, yeah, I, yeah, I think this would be appropriate. Um, sometimes, uh, what I used to do in my class is Go into the class. We, no, I don't do this at the beginning. We lay down the law. We, we, work, we work through our problems and stuff like that. And then at some point, when we had a good pace in the class, I would say, OK, y'all yeah, close your book. Let's talk about, let's talk about the physics of life. Yeah. And you're like, huh? Physics of life? I said, yeah. You know, everything you, I said, do you know they borrow everything from physics? All right. And, and one thing I would always say is that I, I tell them, I say, so you know what you know in, uh, electricity and magnetism, right? And we have what is called um, well, you know, you got you got the um, the B the B field and the E field, electric field, and you're right, right? And they what? They're oscillatory. They're perpendicular to each other. I say while one is doing this, the other one is doing that. So that's where they got that dance from. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you begin to get way. I said, man, y'all didn't know that. I said. Uh, I mean, they've been picking everything from physics, right? Um, and, and so I, may, I try to find different ways of connecting with, with them, um, first as a class, and then also when they do well or they don't do well on the exam. I do the old-fashioned one. I want to see you in my office, okay? Or sometimes I use Dr. Flannery technique, what he did on me. You know, as they pass and by or something like that, I may not say, see my office, but I may say, you know, come in, let me put it, I'm going to talk to you for a second as they leave as a you know, class. I'm just say, hey, you're doing pretty good. You know, keep up the good work. Hey, I see you making some minor, small mistakes. If you can just adjust them a little bit, <laughs> you would probably get another 10, 15 points on your exams. Okay. And, and it's beginning to show them little, small ways that you care. Okay. It's no one, no one to my knowledge. Maybe you all know, maybe US, USD, y'all probably know, and, and, you know, but I don't know anyone who lets you see them the very first time. Everyone we meet, even yourself, you have an agent, don't you? You know what an agent is? Yes, no? Come on, me look at me like that. All right? Like, what, what are you talking about? You never let the, no one know the true you the first time they meet you. You let them meet your agent, right? The agent is the nice side of you, right? The person that you say, you know, like my wife. My wife, for instance, when you, when you call my house, if, 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 she, if she knows it's not okay, somebody else, 
she has a hello. I'm like, where do you get that voice from? When it's me, what you want? <laughs> you know, it's you let me your ages. So, in a sense, in order to get beyond the agent, right? When you date, when you're dating, if you meet someone that you feel you have some attraction for, right? Those of us who've been married, same way, you let you let them meet your agent first, correct? I know you do. Don't don't try to look down like you don't. You do, right? Because nobody want to meet you really the first time, the real you the first time, right? No. I don't think I want them to know that. So you want to kind of sort of work into that slowly. Um, um, and sometimes in observation, you may realize that you may not be the one to mentor them. Okay, and that's what some things I've learned too. My mentoring style is not for everyone. Okay, some people just, you know, and I understand that. And I told them, <laughs> nope. No hard feelings, no love loss, but I'll, I'm willing to help you find someone who you feel comfortable with. Because my only, my, only, my only concern is that you grow and that you blossom because I care about your well-being. I don't even have to, I can, be, I can care about your well-being by being on the sidelines cheering for you. I don't have to be the coach all the time. I don't have to be the player, right, in the, in the, in the game with you. I can, I can be on the sidelines cheering for you. That's part of mentorship, too, is being, being a cheerleader. In fact, about it, I tell students this one thing. Your parents, and that's not always your biological ones, the ones who show that they care for you and concerned about you, they are your number one cheerleaders. Don't, don't, ever, don't, don't ever lie to them. Even when you do wrong, just tell them the truth. Because guess what? They're always in your corner. So lying to them ain't going to help it. It makes it worse to someone that you cares about you because they don't, if you lie, they don't care. If you don't lie, they don't care. So why lie? Tell them the truth. Mom, I just hung out all night long and, oh man, I ain't go to class and, you know, I ain't doing too well in this class. <laughs> I'm about to flunk. What do you think I should do? Now they got a different strategy to come at, right? Don't, but don't, 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 don't. Paint the, paint the picture that the professor is a, is a monster. He don't like me. She don't like me. I, I think he racist. Really? What you do? That's what I tell all my kids. I say, what do you do? That, that, why you got to ask that question? Because there's, it's two, it takes two, right? Okay, so that would, that's about as much as I can really give, and we can talk some more offline. I can share some other things with you. Any other questions, comments? question. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned um, peer peer mentoring and you know the sort of circle of mentoring. How would you encourage um, you know er, as staff members and as students you know how, how would we what would you think is the importance of peer peer mentoring and how do we encourage that and then also just sort of you know having like a, a larger circle of mentors you know like you know how does how do as students you, you find how do you find the right people, and what's, the, what's the significance of just having, because everyone has, you know, hopefully, like, most people have one student, and, you know, you have your students that are in your lab, or that are in your, like, major that you're going to mentor, but, you know, how can we kind of broaden, how we think about that? Well, what I, what, I, what I did, one of the techniques I try to do, always, is have a diversity of students in my lab. Um, introverted, extroverted, combination, um, you know, ones that's real, 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 real smart, that catch on real, real, real quick, and ones that, you know, need a little bit more time. <laughs> um, and I try to, you know, get them in and begin to begin to help, you know, pair them. Um, not, not immediately, because sometimes personality, you got you to also, it, I'm telling you, it, mentoring it, it is best, you got to be observant. You have to observe and notice things, okay? Um, you know, notice little signs because sometimes, you know, they may be, you know, opposites attract. Okay, believe it or not, um, and and they they match up pretty good. But there are also other things you got to consider, and sometimes it's personality. All right, personalities may not blend very well, and and stuff like that. So you you know, got to be careful. But I I normally try to do a diverse kind of thing. So I I try to make sure I'm looking for you know, um, um, I, I'm looking for a student. Um, 
you know, who have a, who has opposite ends of the spectrums, and sometimes one in the in the middle, and then then sometimes I don't even they they fall they stumble upon me, or I stumble upon them. Okay, it's it's that I'm I'm sometimes I don't want I don't want to mentor, <laughs> I I don't want to be bothered, right? And those sometimes are the ones I get my best mentor mentees from. Okay, um, so I just make sure I place myself in a situation or in a position to where I can, you know, uh, recruit and try to work with students from different angles. Some of them are in the research lab. Some of them I'm mentoring only from academic, adv academic advisement or career point of view. Um, one of the things I always do, especially as a chair, I, am res I, I, tell, I tell myself I'm responsible to make sure that you have other opportunities. That is, that is part of my job as your chair. And so whenever opportunity come, I'm trying to get it to somebody. Okay, I'm trying to, you know, uh, I'm trying to point, you know, my majors, and now I'm even going outside to engineering and and other people. You know, I was like, hey, you know, this is a great opportunity, and somebody needs to take it, right? Um, and so, so students begin to start seeing that. Okay, this guy, you know, he's kind of weird, but he's trying to get get it, you know, everybody opportunities. Let me check in with him some. So we get more engineering. Because we have an engineering school at Morgan. And so you got electrical engineers and the civil engineers, they're coming in my office a lot more, talking to my administra administrative assistant, asking to meet with me, you know. So they, you know, thinking about some intern, blah, 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 you know. And I try to, I try to help them. Okay. So yeah. it, it's, it, 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 it could be nerve wracking because you're putting yourself out there. Okay. Um, but you got to also know you. I am a connector. That's what I learned about me. I connect people. I connect situations. Okay, I'm a connector. Everyone's not a connector. Okay, you know, um, but everyone can connect, but they may not be the connector. Okay, or connector. So you got to kind of know you a little bit too. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Gloria? Okay, she has a very soft voice. You got to interpret to me. I, yeah, I, so I can barely hear. Her. Do you have good advice for being a good mentee? Got it. Like, yeah, yeah. How well, yes, as you know, students and and junior faculty and senior faculty. You know, we all need mentors, but how do we actually be a good mentee? Be, to be uh, best advice I can give to students or or anyone, because remember now with the horizontal model, um, the mentee the mentee T is not always the younger one, okay? Um, to be a good mentee, um, <clears throat> think of the same way of how, we, how you would be a good student, right? To be a good student, you study hard, you come to class on time, you try to, get in, you try to read your, you know, your um, notes and the professor notes before you come to class, work a problem or two before. The, you try to stay a step or two ahead of the professor. That's a good student, okay? Same way with being a good mentee. You look, you look for engagement. You, you, you want someone to, to mentor you. You have a desire, right? You, you mean, I cannot teach you if you don't have a teachable spirit. I cannot mentor you if you don't want to be mentored. Does that make sense? So one, first, they, you know, like, like, you know, like, and I'm gonna give it from a biblical point of view. This says to to be a to um, let's say to be a friend or to have friends, you must first be what friendly, right? Okay. So the same way it, it works the same way. If I'm gonna be if I'm gonna be a, to be a good if I want some good mentors, I need to be a good mentee. I need to work on making sure that I'm willing to be mentored. It means it means I'm gonna have to be willing to give the benefit of the doubt. And trust my mentor. Okay, right. I mean, it may not start off that way, but we're gonna build up a relationship to where I can begin to understand that this person really cares about me. They gonna they gonna tell me some stuff that I don't want to hear all the time. 
Okay, they're not gonna always say yes, yes, yes. A good mentor don't always say yes, or you know, you know, giving you praise, and you know, sometimes we correcting you, or we, you know, we checking you. Okay, as they as they say, you know, I mean, some, a lot of my students they know. And I mean, I sometimes I used to go into class mad. You know, I used to be furious, and the guys, you know, they would they would think, oh, he he crazy, he mad. No, I'm angry. I am angry when I get through grading exams and, and, and you didn't perform like I know you can perform. You know, I'm talking about as a, as a class, I come in there angry. I let them know. I say, y'all, because I, I spend too much extra time. I give you too much of my time that I could be at home with my children. I'm spending with you to get this information. And then you're not spending time outside of class to make sure you show me that you appreciate my time. I said, then if I show, then if I, then if I act, if I show you that I don't care about you, then you will say what? Dr. Rock don't care. I said, so yes, I'm upset because you're wasting my time. I be acting, you know. But I show them that I really care about. Them. I said, because if I didn't care about you, I wouldn't do this. I've been where you're going, and I'm trying to help you get there and not have to have the pitfalls I had. That's what, so, so sometimes I didn't, I wasn't always nice to them. And I would tell them no. Some of them I had to fire in my, in my I had to, you know, you, you can't come in my lab no more. Oh, Dr. Rock, I, I still love you. You're still my academic son, but you can't work in my research lab. I'm not gonna, I mean, I'm not gonna be angry at you. I'm, you know, I, I don't hold grudges. I ain't got time for that. I just don't have, I don't have the energy. There's too much to hold that baggage I can't carry. I say, but you cannot be working in my lab. I'm not gonna be paying you on my research grant and so forth, and you're not doing the work. Yes, I know sometimes things happen, but they don't happen that, that frequently, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I have to fire them. And then they start realizing what they really had. And, and they try their best to get back in. And I, I give them, I say, okay, well, we'll see. But can, can I come in? Well, not right here. You need to sit out a little while, a semester or so. Now, mind you, you know, I, I really try to gauge it because sometimes it's a half a semester, sometimes it's a full semester. Sometimes I, um, I let them come back in with no pay. I want to see if you committed. And if you show me your commitment, then, you know, because mind you, I got I to gotta spend that research and research dollar. <laughs> so I'm going, you know, I'm going to take care of you if you really show me you're really serious and committed. So you want a, someone who's going to be, if caring doesn't always mean it's sunshine. And caring means they're going to correct me when I really need it. Okay. And then that's what it means. And you got to be willing to receive that. Okay. Because in life, you know, life is not always sunshine. You're going to have some rain. And a good part about it is that, you know, you can't stop the rain, but it's good to have an umbrella. You know, so, yeah. Oh, did it help you a little bit? Okay.